Good morning. So today I'm going to try to make my baking powder biscuits, uh, the craft recipe. I'll include that below. Um, but this is, I adjusted the recipe according to all the information that I found um, for my sprouted grain flour. We'll see how it goes and hopefully I won't end up with hockey pucks. So here I have, oh, there it is. Okay, here, well, in here I have two cups of my flour, a uh, half a teaspoon of salt, and that's the pink hill in the land, and I have five teaspoons of baking powder because I've never been. I've always been overly generous with baking powder when I'm making these biscuits um, normally. So I figured the a little bit extra would uh, couldn't hurt with the, the flour. So I will put that in here. Then I also have one and a quarter cup of buttermilk and all it is is half and half with maybe a tablespoon or so of vinegar that I put in here and you, can you see the curds it's yeah it's curding up so this is my fake buttermilk I never buy buttermilk so uh, that's why I have that and I will go get the butter Okay, this is a third of a cup of butter that I cut into little tiny cubes. And in case you are new to all of this and don't know, this is the cube of butter that I get. Oh, wow, no focusing whatsoever. Anyway, you'll see on here, each of the little slashes is, is a tablespoon. Here's a half cup and here's a third cup. And so that's how much you use. And then I just slice it and do this because what you have to do, you have to ha make sure that the butter is really, really cold. It is the butter that makes the biscuits flaky and not overworking the dough, but it is mostly the butter. So you drop this in here and then we're going to cut it into, did that one fling out? No. Okay. And then we're going to cut it into the flour. You can use, I love pastry blenders, but you can use these, you, you can use fork, and you just go like this, and you just chop it up into the flour and I will show you where you want it, what you want it to look like when I'm done. And if it's too warm in your house, you can always take this, you can always take this and put it back in the fridge until everything gets cold and then continue. Because I, it is the melting of the butter within, between the layers of the dough that makes it light and fluffy and not hard as a rock. But you just keep doing this, cutting it in. Um, a fork would be easiest out of all the norm, normal kitchen utensils. I don't think using two knives or anything like that would be really smart. But you just keep doing this and I will keep doing this and then I will come back to you. Okay, now, this is about how you want it. Do you see how it's chunky? The the bits of butter, see like right here, they're not too big. They're about this size, I don't know, of a little pea, like a dried pea, but that's what you want. This ensures that you have little bits of butter all throughout the dough. Okay, so now that I've overworked it, um, I 
now pour in the buttermilk. See? It's all it took was a little bit of vinegar in here to get it to curd up. And it's not as sour as real buttermilk, but it does the job. So, mix it up. And you don't want to over mix this. Oh my gosh, this looks too wet. This looks way too wet. I will probably regret this, but I'm going to add a little bit more flour because I, on my own, yeah, I, I did the, so that's about two tablespoons. I'm so scared. I don't want this to be all messed up like the first time. I did the pizza crust or the first loaves of bread. Oh my gosh, those were horrible. Okay, so I'm just going to leave that like that. Do you see how wet it is? So maybe instead of two and a half, I will... I mean, two and a quarter cups of buttermilk. It should have been two. So, we will put some flour on here. I have, I forgot to tell you that I have my oven preheated to 450 degrees. And I also have over here, I'm sure you can see it behind my left elbow, is... Um, cookie sheet lined with parchment paper and okay now I get to try to figure out to knead this without adding too much more flour. But I'm going to have to add flour because, oh my gosh. The recipe from the craft website says to knead it 20 times. I have no idea how many that was, but, but yeah, that's how little kneading you want. You don't want to knead this until it's bread. Okay, it looks like it's starting to come together. Gosh darn it, stop sticking.
Yeah, you don't want to knead it so much that it develops a lot of gluten. And the other thing is you don't want to knead it so much because your hands are warm and they will melt the butter. And you don't want it to melt now. You want it to melt in the oven. Okay, so I think that's good. It actually looks like dough. I'll do it one more time. And so I'm going to pat this out. I won't use a rolling pin. I pretty much stopped using rolling pins a while ago because it got, the dough, I just rolled it too much and it got too, um, it got too thin and I ended up with discs instead of nice big fat biscuits. Okay, this is my cookie cutter, donut cutter, whatever that I bought. But for years and years, this is what I used. I used an old can. I took the lid off of the top and the bottom I washed it really well, and this was my biscuit cutter forever. This and the bigger ones. But I really, really liked it. It's just, it, you know, after years it rusted. So I decided to buy official ones. So, cut it out. You want to get as many of these cut in one go as you can. The more you work the dough, the tougher it gets. And the other thing is the less it rises up if it's not cut. If you just, see, I don't have enough for, so if I were to just go like this and slap this on here, it doesn't rise as a buttermilk biscuit should. Let's see if I can get two more. Okay, these things are not I'm doing this a little too high. Maybe I should have kept using my cans. That's my first time using this cutter for biscuits and I don't know. It's almost like it's not deep enough. Anyway. So. So I'll try to shape this one so you can see the difference between the layering and the non. And so you throw this in the oven for roughly 10 minutes. Okay, 10 minutes later, and these probably cooked too long, so I should have actually started 8 to 10. Anyway, as you can see, there are layers. These didn't get as high as I think they should have, but they aren't bad compared to some of the the other ones with the just the all-purpose flour that I've made that I rolled too thin. And I wanted to show you the difference. See, this is what happens when you cut the biscuits. And this is what happens when they're just rolled out. It, there are no layers to really get into. And whenever you have a biscuit like this, don't cut it with a knife. Just use a fork, like an English muffin. English, no English muffins should ever be cut. Just use a knife. And, hmm, not sure if I'm going to like this. So let's taste it. I mean, it's, it's more wet in the center, obviously. 
because of the flower, the difference in the flower. I don't know how the flavor will be. Probably won't be. Huh. Actually, the flavor is really good. It doesn't compare to the flavor of the biscuits when done with just all-purpose flour. It's um, obviously stronger, but but it's sweeter at the same time. Yeah, there's no, I don't taste any of uh, that mildly bitter taste that you can get from like whole wheat. Um, but I think we have a winner. So I'll write up the proper recipe. I'll include all of this, including the little bit about me um, messing up and the biscuit almost flying off the counter. But, um, okay, well, thanks for joining me. Uh, next time, I will either try pizza dough again for the, what, one, two, three, it would be the fourth time. Um, but next time, I'm going to add vital wheat gluten. You know, in my head, I'm sitting here going, well, they didn't have just vital wheat gluten sitting around back in, I don't know, biblical times or whatever. Um but everything was also different. Um, I want to try, so I want to try pizza dough and I want to try tortillas. And my hope with the tortillas is that they will end up, I want to get them like regular flour tortillas, as in the stretchiness and all that. And I don't know if I can do that without vital wheat gluten, but these are edible. So thanks for joining me. So my son who does not want me to videotape him, has eaten my regular all-purpose flour biscuits, and now... Well, those are pretty good, so... Yeah, those are freaking awesome. Okay, so try that and tell me what you think. Hold on. <laughs> right. Yeah? I like this, yeah. Okay, well, you're not taking them home. We're having them what for the dinner <laughs> tonight. Okay, thank you, bye.